Welcome to my new video. My name is Björn Friedrich and today I'm here not to show you a new technique but to give you a breakdown about one of my favorite rolling sessions of all time and that's Hicks and Gracie rolling with his brother Heuler in 1995 I guess. This is pretty old footage but actually I feel it is timeless and it's amazing and you can learn a lot from it. So um, let me give you a breakdown about what is happening in this video. Stay with me and we start now. Hickson is taking Heuler's base by pulling Heuler into him. You can see how Heuler leans into him and that allows Hickson later to switch into a successful single leg takedown. Right here you see how he's taking him down. Now it's interesting, Hickson is not moving mindless forward, he keeps his base low and his weight over the knees of Heuler. That means Heuler is not able to elevate him in any way. So now he takes his time. He controls the knee line and the weight is on Heuler's legs. So Heuler could not use butterfly hooks and elevations of all kind, you know. And now Hickson is taking his time and is getting half cut. Now you see Heuler is trying to, to get a butterfly hook in, but Hickson is so relaxed and that allows him to stay tight, you know, stay tight and suck the space away. So Heuler could not insert successfully the butterfly hook and Hickson has a really good and tight uh, half guard. Underhook on the right side and his upper body is pretty much glued on Heuler's upper body, which um, is restricting Heuler's movement a lot. You see, Heuler is trying to create frames but look how Hickson is using his, his chin, his shoulders and his upper body to uh, re redirect the frames Heuler is trying to do. You see he's staying pretty close and his chin is over Heuler's wrist so there is no power because um, the angle is pretty bad. Hickson is trapping Heuler's wrist with his chin and that allows him to uh, nullify the, uh, the um, frames. Hickson is pretty methodical, pretty slow in the movement here. He takes his time, has an underhook and now you can see how he is inserting uh, his left leg to get um, the, the, to pass the half guard. Right now he has inserted it and he has twisted his body to get a better angle for um, pulling out his other leg. You could see how relaxed he is in his upper body and that allows him to really change the angles a lot because he's not stiff and not tensed. So still underhook and um, he's not too extreme with his cross face. He's not too tensed. He's just playing around and, and, and changing the angle to uh, pull out his um, leg for, for the pass. And right now he has passed. This is an interesting position. Hickson is trying to get the back, but Heuler is moving forward and Hickson is switching into a butterfly guard and later into a close guard. Th let's see this in slow motion. Hickson tries to get the seat belt, but Heuler moves forward and Hickson is sitting on his butt, but he's smart. He puts his hand on the ground, changing his legs, and so he's not falling over, but he's able to uh, get butterfly hooks kind of butterfly hooks and then he's able to get into a close guard. So the, he's really really relaxed and able to uh, switch the base within a few seconds. Now here you see close guard and you see a quick armbar. He's jumping up and getting triangle choke and the triangle is pretty tight in my opinion but he's switching into an armbar. Let's see this in slow motion. What is interesting is that Hickson is not putting his feet on the hip. He's just moving out of his core muscles. He's just jumping up out of his core muscles. Pretty high. See how high his hips are. He's really close connected to Heuler's head and shoulder girdle and that makes this armbar and triangle so strong. You know, he's really high up in the air. Now he's pulling him down and Heuler is trying to put the knee in the middle to escape but Hickson is, with his hip is cluing towards Heuler, sucking the space in and that allows him to get the armbar because he's really in perfect position for that. Now they go again starting from close guard and Hickson is trying to hip arm sweep and then going for a guillotine and from here you could see 
Hickson is constantly working uh, push and pull principles. That means he's pushing usually with his legs and then pulling with his arms. Now he's trying to pass again, getting an underhook, the good old underhook. And now it's interesting to see how he's using his chin. You know, he's not doing this with his arms. He's staying tight and doing all the work with his chin, killing the frames and getting kind of a cradle here. You see, he has the leg of Hoyla, not the head, but the leg. And he's spreading Hoyla's legs to create tension in Hoyla's um, lower back and hips so he can control him better from this kind of uh, half guard side control. And um, now he's expecting Hoyla to explode. And you could see how he's putting his leg out. Now there is a little bit uh, you can't see. But here that's interesting too. He's trying to get Hoyla's back. But Hoyla is really fighting hard and is putting resistance against him. And his reaction is interesting. You could see he's trying to follow Hoyla. He's trying to get the hooks. You see, and people usually go from there. If they can't take the back, they go for a leg drag or something. They go up and go for a leg drag. Hickson feels the pressure of Hoyla. is not going against the strengths, but it's rolling him over. It's kind of, he's rolling him over and going with the strengths and with the power of Hoyla, which is a really interesting thing. He could overpower him maybe, but he's not doing so. He's really going with the direction of force and getting the back of Hoyla with this beautiful sweep. Now he has Hoyla's back and Hoyla is trying to escape pretty fast. Hickson is following him, but he's losing one of his hooks, but immediately resetting back control. And... You can see how flexible his lower body and his legs are. He's really working a lot with his legs. You see, it's, of course, he's controlling also Hoyla's neck and shoulder girdle. But when you see how good his control with his legs is, you can see why this position is, is, is so effective for him. He is like he's glued against Hoyla. You know, he's like um, he's in perfect. He's perfectly connected with his body to Hoyla's body, not leaving any space. And that's what, what you can see through the whole rolling session. Now he's changing from back control into a close guard without losing any control. You can see he has Hoyla under control, controlling his head. Now Hoyla is trying to get a leg lock, and that's an interesting position. Hickson is putting the whole weight into his leg, so Hoyla could not separate. You see it in slow motion. Hoyla grabs his leg, but Hickson put his whole weight into his right leg. And that makes, makes it very difficult for Hoyla to, to sit down. And, and Hickson is also defending the space between his legs. So Hoyla could not isolate Hickson's leg. Very, very interesting sequence. Here, interesting guard work. Hoyla is trying to get up, but Hickson is constantly using pushing and pulling movements. Now you can see how he's pushing with his legs and pulling with his arms. And sometimes he's pu pulling with his legs. Um, so you can see he's always trying to put Hoyla perpendicular, parallel to the floor. And from this parallel position, he's attacking him with a triangle choke or something else you can see right there. He's always occupying Hoyla. He's putting him perpendicular to the floor, and that makes him vulnerable. And now you can see he's attacking with a triangle choke, because from there it's it's really... Uh, good to get submissions when, when someone is not posturing up, when someone cannot posture up. And that's something Hickson is always doing. He's not allowing Hoyla to posture up. Now he's controlling wrist. Now leg lock attempt again. Hickson is so tight. You see how how really he is putting weight again on his, on his legs so Hoyla could not separate it. And then he's defending the space between his legs. He's turning and you could see the knee and the shin are defending the space between his legs. Now interesting back take and smooth transition. Smooth transition. Look how Hickson is sweeping his hips. It's, he's so relaxed. He's not tensed in his core. He's so relaxed and that allows him to to use the hips in a, in a fast and um, spontaneous uh, motion you know he, he couldn't do that if he would be tensed in his core 
so this relaxation gives him the the um, ability to really uh, suck in every space and take away every space. Now look at his leg. His leg is in the same shape like Hoyler's leg. He's perfectly fitting into this position. He's perfectly connecting to Hoyler. You see, it's like he's sticking to him. Now Hoyler escapes. Hickson gets up and passes from the top. Interesting pass, not allowing Hoyler to do something, but getting up and then passing in a quick fashion. Now you see Hoyler is on top. Hickson is pretty relaxed. His legs are relaxed. His arms are relaxed. Now he's creating distance, putting his knee in, and Hoyler is trying to attack with a swift leg lock. But again, Hickson is taking all the space away, is connected, and Hoyler is basically pulling Hickson on top of him. You know, when he pulls on Hickson's leg, you know, he's on top of him. And so you see Hickson is on top, half guard or mount or something, and now he takes his time to bring the shoulder under his chin to get the choke. Um, but you see he's not too tense, he's not squeezing like crazy, he's just looking for um, the right positions. I hope you have enjoyed this video and if you like my videos, please subscribe my YouTube channel and check out my video series at bjjfanatics.com.